Hello friends, welcome back. Today we are going to be having a discussion about the one thing in the Bible that is unforgivable, that God will not forgive. So go ahead and go grab your Bible and or a pen and paper. That way you can write down the verses that I give you and look them up for yourselves. I would always suggest look these things up for yourselves, read them, study them, pray about them and see if they're true or not. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're going to look at is Matthew 12. So let's go ahead and look in Matthew 12 real quick. I'm going to try to keep this video short. Okay, so I would always say if you are going to read something in the Bible and and quote it especially, you need to know what came before the verse and after that way it's not taken out of context and you would be you know having a true full understanding of what it means so in this situation happening here jesus and his disciples were in a place and jesus had just cast out a demon out of a man and the man was healed the pharisees were standing there as always, the Pharisees were standing there judging. And they had accused Jesus of healing this man, performing the, this miracle by the power of the devil. And this is what Jesus said. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Go to another one of the Gospels, another one of the disciples' versions of what happened, and, and read another version. Because, you know, even two people being in the same place and witnessing the same thing might um, remember a little bit different. Re remember the story just a little bit different or, or add something that the other person didn't add. So, I always like to do that. So, we're going to go to Mark 3. Mark 3. 28 I think I said 30 and it says this is Jesus speaking verily I say unto you all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme but he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost shall never be forgiven but is in danger of eternal damnation Matthew didn't say that and Mark goes on to say right after, because they said he hath an unclean spirit. Jesus said this about the unforgivable sin because the Pharisees accused him of performing this miracle by the power of the devil and did not give credit to the Holy Spirit. Did not give credit to God. They gave credit to the devil. The unforgivable sin is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And I think that most people, when they think that, they think that maybe it's making fun of the Holy Spirit. Kind of how I grew up viewing it, too, um, is somebody just making fun of the Holy Spirit, which there are people out there who do that. But it is also according to God's word, those people who do not give uh, miracles and healings, the gifts of the Spirit, they do not give the gifts of God as credit to God. They accuse them of being demonic. And Actually, I recently heard Marcus Lamb talking about this. I want to say it was about two weeks ago, and he did just pass away. Um, and I would, I, I heard all over social media that he died of COVID. He he died of a heart attack, and he did have COVID, 
that's why he was in the hospital, but he had recovered and they had um, multiple negative COVID tests and had a heart attack while he was in there and died of a heart attack, not of COVID, but anyway, that's another story. Um, I had heard him talking about, he never understood why Christians would say the gifts of the spirit are demonic. Christians would say, and I, I know people who have said this, that, you know, speaking in tongues and the gifts of healing and miracles are demonic. But yet, these same people will allow demonic movies in their homes, demonic books, evil games and what God calls an abomination they will allow in their homes as entertainment and that's okay but the gifts of the spirit are demonic that doesn't even make sense that's a, a huge deception that's deception and when he said that, I was, it was just such, it resonated with me because that's exactly how I feel about it. When I see Christians who allow this stuff in their lives, but yet say the things of God are evil, I think that they are blaspheming the Holy Spirit unaware. And Paul actually did that. Paul talked about that. 1 Timothy 1 13, Paul said he used to be that person. Paul used to be that person who blasphemed the Holy Spirit. But God is merciful because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. It's amazing how unbelief and belief play such a big part in our lives, not just a Christian's life, but everyone. Belief and unbelief are huge. People that say that God, um, that the gifts are not for today and usually say that they're demonic. They always point to one particular Bible verse in 1 Corinthians. So let's go ahead and look at it. 1 Corinthians 13, which is the love chapter. And in verse 8, it says, Charity never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. So he's, he's naming off the gifts of the Spirit, right? Or, or a few of them. And then it goes on to say, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part. So those that are using the gift of prophecy, prophecy, they're using it to partly see, to partly prophesy. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. When that that is perfect shall come, then shall these things cease. What is that perfect thing? Well, let's just keep reading. Let's, let's keep looking. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly here on this earth right now, we see dimly, not, not bright and full and clear. We dimly see, but then later face to face. Now I know in part right now, I only know things in part. 
because of the gifts of God. I only know in part. But then shall I know even also as I am known. What does that mean? Because you don't want to take a verse out of context. Like I said, we can't just read this verse and say, well, they're not for today. Well, it's not talking about that. It's talking about when that which is perfect is come. Has it come? Has, has what? Has that perfect time come? No. Because this isn't saying, you know, if it was before, earlier in the Bible, I might think, well, maybe he's talking about when Jesus comes, when Jesus fulfills what he needed to do on the cross. Maybe that's what he's talking about. But no, this is after. So that's already happened. So that's not what he's talking about. What he's talking about is when we get to heaven, we won't need the gifts anymore. I'm asking you to look it over for yourself, pray about it, read the whole thing, and see if what I say is true. Matthew 13, verse 58. Jesus was basically in his familiar area where everyone knew him. This is Mary and Joseph's son. Um, and he said, Jesus said, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Mark 6, 5, and let's go all the way up to, let's start at four, at four. And you can see it's red letter. Jesus is talking here. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folks and healed them. Jesus, Jesus himself could not perform miracles there because of the people's unbelief. Jesus couldn't do it. That is how powerful belief or unbelief is. You know, let's, let's go, let's go to Mark 16. I'm going to start at verse 15 here. And it says, And he said unto them, and it's talking about Jesus, Go ye unto all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he's talking to his disciples. And he said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So we, we have to believe that we're saved to be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. So unbelief will prevent you from being saved if you don't believe. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. How important is believing and unbelieving? I don't think that the gifts of God are a requirement. Um, absolutely not. But I, but I also think that saying that it's evil or demonic is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. If you don't believe in the gifts, you won't experience them. That's just all there is to it. Just like if you don't believe, you won't be saved. If you don't believe in the rapture, 
you're probably not going to go in the rapture. Maybe, maybe some of you out there have, has said these things, um, unknowing, said it in unbelief, like Paul did. Well, the Lord was merciful to Paul because he was unaware. He was ignorant in unbelief. If that is you as well, you know, search the scriptures, search them out. There's lots of verses that say that they are for today. Why would the Lord tell us to desire the better gifts if they weren't for us? To dangle a carrot in front of our face, you know? Um, these are, these are helpful to us. These are gifts from God. And you don't have to accept them. You don't have to believe that. But I definitely wouldn't, wouldn't say that they're demonic. Because that's what the Pharisees did. And Jesus quickly said that that is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. So, you know, there might be people out there that are fake. Um, they're everywhere. Absolutely. I can see personally, I have witnessed miracles. I have witnessed demons being cast out of people. I, I could tell you lots of stories. And if you know me personally and you want to hear any of those stories, I'd be happy to share them with you. Those are gifts from God. And now that you know, now that I've gone through the verses with you, and these are just a few, you know, like I said, do the research yourself. We're all growing every day. We're all learning. I feel like we're in the last days. And if ever there was a time for needing the gifts of God, it's now. It's now. Um, yeah. So I hope this cleared some things up for you. I... I would be happy to answer any questions that you have. Leave them in the comments below. I'm bringing these things up for a topic of conversation. So if you, you know, have Bible verses that apply to this, leave them in the comments below. Um, if you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments. And yeah, I would be happy to hear from you um, and discuss this. I mean... That's what it's all about, right? We're constantly growing and learning and, and searching out the scriptures and um, coming to more and more understanding. But yeah, so anyway, uh, I hope you're all having a great day and I will talk to you next time. So bye-bye for now.